welcome to the channel again. For today we have a special pen since this is a very very dear to my heart pen. Who is that? Well, exactly my point. As always, you know me, it's a host Amy from Pen Danger. Well, technically speaking, not as always because four years ago I was just that. And a lot of things have been changed in the last four years. And um, in that video, I was reviewing the Visconti Watermark, a very impactful fountain pen for me at that stage in my collection of fountain pens. And I was thinking about today, oh, it should be fun to do a revisit on the same fountain pen and to see what's been changed and how do I look at the fountain pen right now in our days after experimenting with so many fountain pens? Should be fun, right? Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax. Thank you for joining the Penvagia YouTube channel for yet another video. And watching the early intro and uh, my previous videos from four years ago, Ooh, a lot of things have been changed since then. And uh, for every single thing that has been changed, I've put a lot of work into this and I owe everything to you, my audience, my clients, my friends, and the whole Fondapam community. You all pushed me to strive and to improve the quality of my content, of how do I present myself, of the informations, and also to put everything and all of my efforts into Pen Venture as a company. And for every single one of those things, I am grateful. I was watching and I've seen the Visconti watermark being one of the early serious Visconti reviews in my career. And that fun plan impacted me quite a lot back then. And I said, okay, let's do something like, let's revisit this fountain pen and uh, now being more able to express myself better in English and to talk about fountain pens and after so many experiences with different fountain pens since then because back then I had like 10 fountain pens at least I don't know but now I have close to a hundred and if we count the stock maybe it's 200 300 plus I don't even know but anyway let's get back and I would like to say a few words regarding this fountain pen and it's not going to be a normal video review in which I'm going to explain the design and everything about this fountain pen. I'm going to tell you how this fountain pen changed how I look at fountain pens since then. And I will also tell you what's different now after uh, having uh, to use it for the past four years. How this time and that used affect the design of this fountain pen, what I've been familiarized with, and also what I've discovered in the past four years. And I think that should be fun. Anyway, the Visconti Watermark is a fountain pen which is a limited edition of 888 pieces, which is stamped right here on the piston knob. And this fountain pen, uh, it was my first fountain pen that exceeded a thousand euros quite a big, big milestone. Since then, I have a number of fountain pens, I believe over 20 of them that exceed that uh, 1,000 euros. So it's not that unique anymore, at least in my collection right now. In these years, I've used this fountain pen and I came to realize it is a very, very impactful moment for me when I acquired that fountain pen because it opened myself up to explore much more interesting and uh, much more expensive writing instruments. It is a fountain pen that I've used quite a lot and in uh, many of my top 10 fountain pens of the entire year, it made it to top three and in some cases I believe it was number one. And it couldn't be more true because this is a fountain pen that's for me a grail pen. 
I love to write with it. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. After two years, I purchased this fountain pen. Visconti came up with a few different, uh, let's say, editions of the same fountain pen. It was the Blue Moon, I believe, the Rainbow. Uh, it had uh, a few dashes of colors. Basically, the same fountain pen with some minor changes in regards of the design, the plating on the silver parts and the different color of the inner acrylic uh, parts of the fountain pen. I deem to find this old style design being the one that's appealing more to me and I still consider that. Uh, the finial is not detachable although I would like to have something like the MyPen system to replace this finial with something else like my name initials or anything but I'm not able to do that. Uh, the clip still works, everything is good, the spring still works and everything is tight tight and everything works well. I couldn't smudge this fountain pen, although I've used a number of inks, maybe some of them more harsh, much more prone to leave some stains in this clear um, acrylic. I haven't had any stains or major stains in this fountain pen, but I do practice a very very good hygiene and I do wash it and I do use Q-tips to wash every single part and uh, that shows because this fountain pen pretty much looks pristine as we speak. It came with the 23 karat palladium dream touch nib and I don't know about you but for me mwah, I love the 23 karat palladium dream touch nib. They don't do nibs like this anymore. The palladium uh, pricing exceeded that much since the day that they decided to put palladium as a material for the Visconti nibs that it's not viable anymore. So I do appreciate a lot more the palladium dream touch nibs. Back then when I did the video review, I liked this tub nib, but now I do cherish it even more because it's rare and it's going to become even more rare as we speak. The grip on this fountain pen is a little bit, um, let's say problematic because it's a metal uh, section. I'm not a huge fan of metal sections and in the years that showed because I do have quite a low number of photographs that uh, have metal as a section. And in this case, we have this hourglass shaped section, which is quite, quite slippery. But again, the shape of the section prevents the fingers from moving towards the nib. So I would accept this section as being one comfortable and enjoyable for my writing um, style and uh, my writing grip. Uh, one of the major things that I've discovered in uh, years of using this fountain pen is that it captures a lot of dust and debris in between uh, this uh, cutouts of the silver overlay and the inside uh, acrylic barrel and you cannot wipe those things and I'm a big big OCD person and I've tried to clean this fountain pen with everything and you couldn't get 100% of the dust the breeze and everything out of those once it gets into those uh, lines in between the clear parts and the silver and that bugged me <laughs> that bugged me Anyway, have a look at this. So we have watermarked in grade right here. And do you see something odd at the W and the other letters? Uh, the entire fountain pen is covered in a palladium plating. The silver parts of the fountain pen are covered in palladium to offer a much more resilient and resistant layer and not have tarnishing on this silver. That is genius. I love this because I do enjoy uh, having a silver fountain pen but without the drawbacks of the patina and uh, constant polishing and trust me if you had to polish this fountain pen with the polishing cloth and this uh, very uh, let's say open spaces of the overlay of the silver overlay that would drive me nuts and I'm pretty happy to have uh, palladium plating all over the silver but on that W, it came off and it's visible. I sent the pan uh, back for repairs and they told me that they would need to replace completely the part and I didn't want it that. I like to keep my fountain pans as they came. 
it's sort of a bond. Uh, we collect years, bruises, dings, bangs. If we can fix something, I'm okay with that. If we need replacement, it doesn't sound right. I love to have the same fountain pen that I walked into Stefano's store, I met him and I had that fountain pen bought from his shop and should stay like this. Moving further, the filling system. Well, in years, the filling system became a little bit more loose to say so. I'm over this, but sometimes it bugs me because in years of use, this acrylic collected some debris and it's not that clear anymore. And to be honest, I do believe this is not a problem, it's just use and it comes with that. And uh, we should understand this as normal wear and tear. And uh, for me, this fountain pen remains like a very, very crucial moment to be remembered. And this is a token of remembering that moment when I made the leap forward to fountain pens in and above 1000 euros. And for that alone, I would like to keep this fountain pen and to see from where I came and from where uh, my humble beginnings lead me till this day. And uh, pretty much that's the overall point of this video. This fountain pen marked the beginning of something, then I evolved and arrived at a much more refined version of myself. And also now I want to see evolution in the way I look at fountain pens and in the way I look at this Visconti watermark. I consider this fountain pen as being one of those fountain pens that when I remove it from the case and start to write with it, I remember that moment when I acquired this fountain pen, when I did this video review four years ago, and you've seen me, I'm a completely different person. I look different, I talk different, I'm more articulated, and uh, I've been more and more, um, let's say, pushed to evolve, and I've put a lot of hard work in my content, in my videos, and in Penventure as a company. And uh, for that alone, I like to keep this fountain pen, and to say that I'm very grateful to have such days in which I'm remembering those moments and glass up, let's hold a toast for the next four, six, 10, 20 years from now when I will decide to make another video if I'm in good health and everyone uh, is uh, watching my videos 10 times more evolved than now. Do you want to see how this fountain pen is writing? I think we should ink it up and at least give it uh, a spin on some very good paper because that 23 karat palladium um, stub nib is as good as it was in first day. Pen. Visconti. Water. Mark and ink is Waterman and uh, I think is inspired blue. The nib is 23 karat palladium, D palladium this is a stub 1.3 millimeters. I miss the palladium nibs a lot and they are awesome, awesome. I love these nibs and I really think it's going to be one of those uh, things about Visconti which is going to be very, very in demand in a few years from now because they don't do nibs like this anymore. And these nibs are quite impressive. They are soft, they are wet, they are a joy to use. It's, it, it's something that I, I cannot describe in words because they are that awesome, that unique, that, that above everything. Not only that, but this uh, nibs in the period that they were introduced, that wasn't anything like those. Take a look at this wetness test. They are super wet and a joy to use. And when they write, they write like nothing else. Trust me. Uh, now let's see some normal. 
figure of eight and this is quite an interesting stub. It is offering a lot of line variation. This nib is it's like a square. So if you watch the nib like this, it's a square. And the touching part is the, the lower edge. And uh, if you move the fountain pen like so, that's a much more narrow line. And if you go like so, it's much more wider. 1.3 millimeter. Usually, I wouldn't flex a 23 caliber lithium dream dash nib. But for the fun of it, I'm gonna show you. It put down a lot of ink and look at that ink pulling down. It is soft enough to have some flex, to have some fun out of it, but it comes with um, normal line variation, which is offered by the grind of uh, the stub nib and the tipping of the nib, which I adore. And uh, I would like to say that for me personally right now, extra fine, fine, medium and stub are uh, the ones that I love from the 23 karat palladium uh, lineup. And now let's use the famous sentence to see if everything works correctly. The quick brown fox jumps. Oh my God. Oh my God, this nib is incredible. Uh, jumps over the lazy dog no skipping no hesitation nothing whatsoever everything works as it should and i love this nib a lot a lot trust me i love writing with these nibs i love to collect them i love to have them in my uh, lineup and at least at least i want to have at least one 23 care palladium dream touch nib in my daily rotation in regards of what I ink as fountain pens and uh, what do I use to write. The fountain pen is still important. Is that important? Well, not like it was four years ago because four years ago I had this fountain pen and a few others. Now I have this fountain pen and almost a hundred others. Do I love this fountain pen? Yes. Uh, do I'm gonna keep this fountain pen? Yes. It is going to be on my top 10 list? Probably yes. It's going to follow in the top three? I don't know right now. We will see at the end of this year. So probably we'll do a summer edition of this later in a month or two, or maybe we do one at the end of the year. Anyway, uh, I'm not looking forward at actually selling this one from my personal fun pen collection, but if you're looking for something like this, a slab of sterling silver shaped into a writing instrument by the skillful hands of the Florence-based pen manufacturer Visconti, equipped with a writing point made of 18 karat gold, available in extra fine, fine, medium broad and a 1.3 millimeter stub, ready to delight your writing experience. That, my friends, is the Visconti Watermark. Thank you for watching my content. Thank you for supporting the Venture YouTube channel. Thank you very much for everything. If you enjoy my content and uh, if you want to support my growth, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also down below you'll find the links and everything that you need in order to get in contact with me if you're looking for an extra writing instrument. Also, if you want to support us and support the growth of the Penventure YouTube channel, don't forget, subscribe, you can do that right now. Just click there, turn the notification bell on. And if you want to watch more of my content, I'm gonna leave you this video right here. As always, it's me, your host, Amy, and I'll forward seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye.